everyone and welcome to this little demo on painting grass. So I recently was asked about um, how I go about creating a grass that is sort of, you know, different, not so, you know, I think tight in the style or maybe just more abstract in style. And so I'm going to first start out with like when you're painting grass, you're painting a landscape. So um, I'm going to start off with sort of grass in the distance and then I will kind of show you grass up close. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of this transparent brown oxide. And when I'm painting with greens, I like to do sort of an underpaint, usually with a little purple. So I'll put a bit of that dioxazin purple in the mix just to give it a little bit, you know, of a contrast that I like with the green. So I'm just going to put some of that down just to get something on there. And I'm just using a throwaway paper palette that I bought from Michaels. And I really like these for doing these little demos. And if you're thinking about painting and sometimes you put a little too much pressure on yourself to make something perfect, these are great practice. Um, it's a great thing to practice on. So to create a kind of a almost a, a up close and a far away. You can also, you can sort of get that going right in the beginning of your uh, underpaint. So you notice I'm using more of the dioxazin violet in the foreground here. So I always like to texturize using um, my Viva paper towel. And um, I have, um, I'm just using an old brush. This is just an old, uh, it's a rosemary brush that I've had for many years and it still works great for putting on that initial layer. So I'm just going to now, I'll switch to a different brush and put down some more color. So, um, okay, so... When you're painting grass, you have to think in the foreground, it's going to be warmer and in the distance cooler. And then you're thinking about that there's some patches of, you know, you know, there's dirt that come through the grass. There's different variations. So um, in the foreground, you could use a warmer green right out of the tube is sap. And it's um, warmer compared to viridian. So another thing is when you're talking warm and cool, um, you're basically just, you're in, it's always in comparison to. So um, if you compare those two, Viridian is cooler, it's a bluer color, and Sap is just a warmer, um, deeper green that's just, you know, you kind of have to put them down next to each other and you can just see. So I'm just going to, start by putting some of this sap green down in sort of a horizontal method because we're not going for a lot of texture. If we're gonna show or depict grass that's kind of close up, we're gonna start off just with some real easy strokes here. And then as I get um, put this on, you'll notice that the the strokes up close look closer because you can see that underpaint showing kind of a warmer, richer, deeper color going to a cooler, lighter color. And it looks more white, even though I didn't put white in it because the white canvas is showing through more up there. I didn't rub off as much. So you're already getting a kind of a closer and a further away. So that's creating depth. Now, to show that the green on top is getting further away, you could do two things. You could switch to Viridian and just add, add some of that Viridian in there, but it's still, it's cooler, but it's still kind of dark, so it kind of keeps this going at the same pace. So I'm just gonna add a little white and a little Viridian, and that's gonna make a nice, icy green, really cool green. So you don't need it to be 
that cool. You could even add a little sap to transition. So I had some sap. I'm leaving this mix here because I don't want to, I still want to use that. But you could put a little of that sap and viridian and white in here. And then get some of this real cool blue and you can even make it lighter off in the off in the distance so you kind of have this gradation you know and then to make it look grassy um i'm just gonna take my brush and you can use i'm just using the same brush but i've dried it off and i'm gonna start lifting some of that here and there give you that idea now you're getting a real grassy texture And if I was going to paint a landscape, you know, with a tree or something, this would be a really good way to go because you've got now a nice base. And just texture the edges of where there's a transition. You can kind of texture that up a little. And I'm just leaving the underpaint to show, you know, where there's some, you know, different grass or it's been burnt out a little, or, you know, who knows what you're showing in your painting, but it gives you a great underpaint to work with. And then I will take a little red oxide and you can get some white and get some red oxide. You can dull it down with some of that sap green there and just kind of give, give some little, like almost like a, path, you know, for the eyes to go up into that. You know, you're just adding a little bit of that, something different in there. And then again, just sort of texture those little marks in, kind of blend them, I mean. And uh, sometimes you can, you know, use something else to sort of put some marks in there and even take a little ver of that dioxazine violet and add some white to it. And you can put a little hint of that purple in there. Just not, you don't have to go crazy with it, but just put a little bit just to give it some life and then you can take a little yellow ochre and there's always a little bit of yellow grass here and there but you see it's all very soft so this is a real you know a meadow if you had like a little you know little house at the very back of this yard or something far away and you're trying to show that something's off in the distance and this is just kind of leading you up to it you want little, a few little dashes of light to kind of guide your eye up to that area, you know? So you're not just stuck between here and there. So that's just one idea. And you've got, you know, you're typically a little something going on up here. Anyways, you get the idea. There'd be something up there that you're heading to. And you could, if you had, I didn't put any red out, but if you had a little bit of red or something, you could put the odd little speck of red or something to, you know, show there's some flowers or some, I've got white, so I can do a few little, you know, who knows what's in there, could be flowers, something, you know, just to make it more interesting. And then in the foreground, you could put a few details, but you don't really don't for this type of grass want to do that. You're just mainly creating the the feeling of grass from a distance. So now um, that kind of covers the grass far away. And then in this painting, which I really liked, I 
I do my typical grass of, you know, that's a little bit bolder and more stylized, but still kind of abstract. So for that, um, just go with a large brush. You know, I've got this number eight flat and I, I like using a larger brush for that so I can make the marks easier. So I can work right on top of this surface because if I was gonna paint the robin with or a bird with grass close up, I would still want that purple in there because it just really kind of, and you can use, you know, quinacrinone magenta. Um, if you don't have dioxazine violet, you can mix it up um, using some, you know, alizarin and ultramarine blue, that would work too. So just to keep it simple, I'm gonna add a little more dioxazine violet. So first of all, let me just kind of wipe a little bit of that away. I'm going to put a little bit more of a bolder purple in there. And that's what I did with this, with this Robin painting. And then I wanted to really show off the Robin's red chest. So I kind of put in the dark green um, there. So you get a kind of a base like this and you can scruff it up a little with your paper towel. That already gives it a lot of grassy texture. So, you know, you're getting a lot of stuff happening there that you didn't even realize could happen. So that's a good way to do it. And then get some white and a little, you know, dioxazine violet and it kind of in the shadows, you can add a little cobalt and I kind of just go and make some little marks like this. And it just depends on if you want to have the have it real dark. But, you know, I'm starting to put some of those grassy shapes. Some of them I like to leave kind of more square like this. And some I pull my brush right across. So you get a variety um, of of interesting shapes. Then I want to mix the color, make it more blue. And I do that just to add some variety. So although it's grass, I'm painting purple. And now I'll take a little bit of, you know, you can use sap or viridian and a yellow. I've, I've put out some yellow ochre and mix that up, some viridian and yellow ochre, something to you know, give some variety. And then I kind of just break it up using different tones that kind of work together. So purples and greens look really nice together, but so do, you know, if I'm working on a quail in the desert, um, so does just using some, you know, yellow ochre in that purple. So they, they really go well together um, and with most things. And you just have to, you know, use your, use your judgment with what, you know, whatever the subject is. Um, think about what complements the, the subject matter. I mean, I just like using color to make it a little more interesting than just painting, you know, all browns and greens. So, that's why I, I kind of have fun with this. And in this, in this case, I really went with the purples and greens to really show off the Robin's, you know, red chest there, which I also exaggerated a little with the orange. So, um, you know, if you are painting a blue bird, you might go with a little less color. If the bird was really blue, you might do some you know, some dollar versions of this. Maybe a little, maybe a little less um, bright purple. You would go with, you could mix dioxazine and some transparent brown oxide and white, and you'll get a nice, more mellow, earthy purple that I'll show you here. and maybe add a little bit of blue. 
so and then and then again the further these purples and greens go away you can just tone them down with adding more white and you could tone them down adding a little more blue because that'll make them go further back and not look as close just using different color um, tones can set things back so if i use these bluer tones like adding more viridian to the mix you get more of a grayed bluey color and adding more white to that purple mix, you're gonna get a paler purple color that just goes from being warmer to cooler, which also means closer to further away. And just add a little more white in there and just play around with it. But as long as you keep your, your, um, those colors warmer in the front and cooler in the back, you'll create that depth that you want. And then you can add, a, you know, some up close, some real, if you had some, well, red oxide and, and some yellow ochre will create a nice warm orangey red color. And you see that gives it a really nice warmth in the, in the foreground here. And some people go even hotter. They use, you know, like that, like some quinacridone magenta in there. So that's kind of what I would do um, to create that grass. Um, at Once you get all those marks, maybe the only other thing I would suggest is you sometimes want to loosen them up. So if you rip a paper towel, you get all these edges and you could fold it a few times and uh, just drag that across here and there. Get some beautiful marks from that that, you know, just look amazing. It looks like you were expert at this. Just dusting that across. See, that's all the paint that came off, but it's making a really beautiful softness to that. So another thing is softer edges further away create a much muted, background um, that looks further away it's like a it's like a, f a photograph that's really sharp in the in the front and then really kind of blurry in the background so I really like this and I could see anything on there I could you could put you could turn it into any scene you want really it kind of play it gets your imagination going so um, just playing around like that makes me feel like I could paint a large painting with that and it would look would look really fun and exciting with all those colors. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you try this out and I'm sure glad I did. So if you have any questions like this, like how to paint grass more interesting or how to paint, you know, uh, leaves or flowers, whatever you are interested in, um, please comment below in the in the video and um, I will post this for a few days to a week on YouTube but then I'll take it down and it will be available through Patreon and you have access to that starting at the $10 level you can paint all the little tutorials that I post. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.